Okay, Spencer, the question was, I have always identified with type two, but most of the descriptions of type two seem too passive. I think I might have the 268 tri-type. Could my tri-type be the reason that I don't relate to the passive description of type two? It's an excellent question. It's a great question. Um, and that is also a multifaceted answer. Yes. Um, twos can have, there's already a line of connection to eight. So there's that already. Um, twos are direct in their own way. So they, they, they come off as, as passive maybe to others and, but they, they really try to, to maneuver things to still get their needs met. Maybe they're not directly being like, do this for me, but they'll subtly bring it up repeatedly. They'll address it, gently mention it like, like, oh, okay. So you're going to do that before blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like they, they'll plant hints. They are direct communicators. They're just not aggressive about it. And the thing is, is twos can get feisty. People don't, people don't really talk about that a lot, but twos can absolutely get feisty, especially when wounded, because it's like, I have been nice. I have been self-sacrificing. I have been this, I have been that, that's it. My needs are not being met. And then they can actually get much more direct, especially if they have eight in the tri-type. Because I always say, like, if eight's not like the leading number in the tri type, the the eight's like the the bouncer at the door that's kind of like regulating whether things are fair, and it kind of comes in, and and will and will be like, okay, this is no more. And when that combines, it can be very direct. Um, sometimes, you know, two combined with other numbers can come off much more passive. But even still, there's not a single two that I've ever met that doesn't maneuver to get their needs met. And they get confused because a lot of times it gets reflected back to them that they that they're pressers. They press, they press, they press, they press, and the two will be won't identify with that. So because they see pressing as something different, and they're not connecting that they are subtly bringing it up at a higher rate, as opposed to bringing it up less often but much more directly. So. Mm -hmm. You're, you're making such a good point, Spencer, and you might want to add on to this, but I'm partially responsible for people misunderstanding the passive aspect to types. But you see, as human beings, we're either directly aggressive or passive aggressive, but we're going to have our needs met. And if we don't have them met, we're going to complain about it to the person that's not meeting it or to other people, it's not gonna go silent mm -hmm. or we're just gonna leave and go do what we wanna do. So I probably am responsible because I only put up kind of the positive description. I didn't go in depth with each tri-type online. And even then, Passive does not mean soft. It means you're going to give way. But the experience I've had with twos is they'll say, oh, you know me. I do whatever you want to do. But are you sure you want to do that? It's usually a two, six, nine, because it's triple wanting to meet my needs and help me and do extra things. But they're absolutely convinced this is all two six nines that they're easygoing and doing what the other person wants but what they may not recognize till they learn about the enneagram is they are navigating so that the outcome is what they want now ultimately they will defer to the person in charge but they will be asking many times wait, are you sure you want to do that? And that's just my clue that something bothers them. And then I ask them, well, what is it that's bothering you? Because it could be a really good point that I haven't thought of because I'm so direct. So just know that the six, the two, and the nine are going to create a tri-type that appears passive, but they're very strong people, very strong. 
And as Spencer said, if they have eight in the tritype, then they're going to really be quite adept at getting the outcome that they want through those hints. And they are hints, but they're repeated. They're absolutely repeated. And they are the most naturally generous mm -hmm. that will take that extra step to meet the need that they see in front of them. And they're kind. They're all focused on being kind people. And what else have you noticed, like in couples dynamics? Anything come to mind with the 269 and the other tri-types? Man, the twos, the two's observation skills, um, the ability to, and I'm talking like side eye stuff that they catch. Um, the 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 two's ability to recognize that you cut like crust off your sandwiches, and then later on when they ask you to, if they you know, not that they would necessarily like ask you to make them a sandwich because that might be a you know something that they're still working through, um, but say you make them a sandwich and then you know you cut off the crust. A two is going to love that the person looks at the sandwich and goes, wait, you know that I cut the crust off? Because the favorite thing that I've picked up with people who have two in their tri-type is, yeah, you didn't even have to tell me. I watch you. I see you. Like, I see you. Absolutely. And I've noticed that that's a big love language because for the two, that's what they want also. They want to truly be seen, truly understood. And they just want to feel validated. And it really upsets them when they have to make that so clear because they do feel like they've dropped hints and maybe in, even done it directly, but they don't want to make a big show out of it or make a big problem out of it. So it's not like they will maybe press as hard at first if the person's not understanding. So I've really noticed that that's kind of my belief as to why that's so hurtful because it's like, man, I'm thinking about you when you're not around. I am like strategizing to make sure you feel cared about and like I even got this little thing that proved I was thinking about you. It wasn't even your birthday, like blah, 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 blah. And then the person will like, I don't know, not remember something that's very symbolic for the two. Because that's the thing about two is there's a meaning behind why I'm paying attention to this. And so there's something more than just whatever the fight's about. There's a symbolism about, I don't know, their, their worth, their value, right? And so the their ability to see is a superpower. And yeah. like, I like to think that I see stuff really well with like four in my tri-type, six in my tri-type, all that kind of stuff. But twos, man, they're they're really paying attention in like a whole nother level. And you really address something so critical and that is the worth or the value. So mm -hmm. for all heart types, you're trying to get the feedback that you have value. But in the case of the two, it's, do you have worth? And the fear is that you're worthless, that you're not useful, you're unneeded. Mm -hmm. so anything that communicates in their evaluation of circumstances that they aren't appreciated for what they do mm -hmm. brings up that terror that they're dispensable. Mm -hmm. Whereas other types maybe don't think they're dispensable. They don't worry about it one way or another. But all of us have a fear of not being valued in our important relationships. But with the two, it's at a whole nother level. They feel like they have to earn the right to be given to. And then other types might think, and they could also be a two. No, oh, I do so much, I should be given to. I've earned that. I'm entitled to that. But when there's no discussion of it, there can be misunderstandings. Whereas mm -hmm. once the Enneagram comes into play, it's very easy to work with different tri-types and help them understand that when the two is saying, wait, I need you to meet my needs, they're really saying like, pick me, pick me, me first, me first. It's not like, pick me. Now, I have met people <laughs> that are not 
uh, reflective in any way. They don't know the Enneagram or any other typology. And they may be that way, especially if they're the two, seven, eight. They don't want to wait for anything. They don't want anyone to interfere with where they're headed and what they're going after. So it's very different than the two, six, nine, but they're both twos. So you have to see the defense strategy. And what is the defense strategy? Not directly telling people what you need. In fact, the defense strategy is repression, which is to conceal your neediness. So then the other person doesn't realize what you need or want. Mm -hmm. So it's creating a safe space for the two and whomever they're in relationship with to discuss that. Like, what might your needs be? And they just want people to know. And a lot of times the two, depending on the tri-type, will say, well, you should know. I know what you need. And then what they can learn is they may know what they think you should need, but it may not be what you actually need. <laughs> and they're just like attentive to everything that you're doing because their happiness comes from being aligned with the person they've chosen to attend to. And that's another thing people don't understand about twos is they try to be likable to everyone. And if there's a difficult person, they'll try harder to get that person to smile or respond to them. Now, two and six in particular are the hysterical types. So they need a response from you. They need to know that you see them, care about them, and want to meet their needs just the way they want to meet your needs. And once you understand what those needs actually are, the two will back off on their idea that they know you better than you know yourself. And in some ways they do, but in other ways they might not know what's more important to you in terms of possibilities. So yes, great description, Spencer. So, yeah. so very true. I can just add one last yes. um, uh, this comes up a lot in my sessions, the, the good person dilemma. Yes. I find that this is uh, too vague of a definition. And a lot of times, good person falls under the category of not pushing your needs. Um, and it's too loose of a description. And you can ask them to identify other good people around them. And there's multiple representations of it. But typically, someone with two in their tri-type, especially the higher up it is on the, on the totem pole, um, will struggle to see that they can be both a good person and show resistance to what someone's doing that doesn't feel good or isn't meeting their needs or whatever, because it doesn't feel like what a good person would do. It's, there's, it's understanding that you can set boundaries in a, in a compassionate and validating and understanding way and still fight for your own. And twos usually feel like they have to choose between other and self. And since they care so much about other, they tend to prioritize other, not realizing you can actually do both the exact same time. It doesn't feel like they can occupy the same space. Um, and with my couples, that comes up literally every, I can't think of a single one I'm working with or have worked with where that hasn't come up. Like you can both get your needs met. It's just maybe just using a different type of strategy. So exactly. Yeah. You know, the other thing about good, people say, oh, the type that wants to be the good person is the one. Mm. The one needs to be right. And being a good person is the right thing to be. Mm -hmm. But they need to do the right thing in every situation. And they're more logical than the twos. Twos are reading the emotional need. Mm -hmm. But the two needs to be the good person, all around good person. And the six needs to be the boy or girl, man or woman next door that's likable, the good neighbor. The buddy, yeah. Yep. And the nine 
wants to be the pleasant person. So if you have that tri-type, you're going to definitely care. But if you have one in the tri-type, so it's uh, 126 instead of 269, just the gut type is different. The irony is the 269 is the most inclined to see the other's need. Whereas the 261, on the other hand, is the most militant tri-type of the 27. And what was lost in the dissemination of the Enneagram is the militant nature of type two. And that's why so many twos mistype as AIDS. And if we think about someone like Napoleon, he would be the two, not the eight. But most people say, oh, yeah, he had to be, have been an eight. But actually, if you dive a little deeper into what mattered to him, his image really mattered. And he had two and eight in the tritype. So it's understandable. As best we can tell, he led with two, not eight. Whereas if we look at... Mussolini, people say, well, he was an eight. Actually, I think he was counterphobic six. Fear was driving his focus. And yet he had eight in the tri-type. So if someone's a six in the tri-type, they're going to go with their strongest type is what they're going to think they are. So each Enneagram type has nine different possible tri-types. So there's many ways to look at tri-type. So if you look at the two, since that's the primary theme so far, the two, seven, eight, the most self-referenced of the twos, they're not as other referenced as the two, six, nine. The 259 is quieter. They're going to help you, but it'll be really quiet. Like this one person at one corporation that I went to regularly knew I liked bottled water because a pitcher of water, I could knock over. I could get my computer wet or my papers wet because I might be illustrating too big and accidentally knock it over, especially since it was clear. So I'd have to have it out of my reach. So she noticed I'd just go get bottled water. And that's because if I have a top on here, even if I knock it over, I'm not going to damage anything. And that's more the impulsivity of type A. You kind of don't know where you are in time and space. You could be this much off of everything and just bump into things. Mm -hmm. So understanding that was very noteworthy to me because she was very introverted, very quiet, and she was an ISTJ with the two, five, nine. But she noticed how I liked the lights, when I wanted them turned up, turned down. I didn't have to specify all that for her because the 259 is tracking every detail and they're the problem solver. And people think, oh, they're passive because of the five and the two and the nine. Well, they're not gonna overtly energetically be pushing against, but they're not missing a thing. And it's really instructive because they don't have to be told several times what's important because the two's already tracking what will give them value. Mm 